Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with the AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are the top seven crucial pressure testing tips for HVAC systems. So we're talking about air conditioning systems and heat pump systems. Check out our book, The Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. We go over system preparation, system charging, and troubleshooting. We have the book available over at acservicetech.com. Tip number one is it's okay to do a fast pressure test if you have a digital manifold gauge set or digital gauges. The reason for that is, is you have your decimal points here on your pressures up at the top, and you're going to be able to see a very small leak and the pressure drop a lot faster than you would with a compound manifold gauge set. So you'd have to leave a compound manifold gauge set on the system longer with the pressure test in order to see the pressure fall. And that's due to the, the uh, increments on the compound gauges. The other thing is the compound gauges tend to hang up, so you... When you're getting ready to check the pressure again, you might want to give it a little tap, and sometimes it will fall down to the actual pressure in which it is. So if you do a 10-minute pressure test with a digital manifold gauge set, you're going to get your accurate pressures to see if, if it is actually falling or you do have a leak. Tip number two is you see that we're reading 101.8 PSIG on both sides of this system, and right here you see that we're reading right above 100 PSI. Now, on older systems that are R22 systems, you got to check the indoor evaporator cool rating plate to see what the max design pressure is. On this system that we're on right now, it is an R22 system, and you don't want to overpressurize it or you're going to create a leak. So the design pressure, the max design pressure on this coil box is actually 150 PSIG. Here's the backside of an older R22 evaporator coil, and you can see where the tin is rusting and rotting at and where it's touching these copper elbows, that tends to be where the tubing ends up leaking at, either in the front of the evaporator coil or the backside like this is. And you end up leaking out of here, so you really want to be very cautious with how much pressure you put in an older R22 evaporator coil, especially if the max design pressure is low. The reality is if this evaporator coil is used for air conditioning only and not for a heat pump, this would never even see anything as high as 100 PSIG. It's normally going to be operating at, say, 60 to 85 PSIG, depending on, on the heat load and the outdoor temperature. So just be very cautious with how much pressure you put in an older R22 air conditioning system. Right below my finger, you're going to see the max design pressure is 150 PSIG on this evaporator coil. Here's the max design pressure of another evaporator coil, and you see that this one's listed as 450 PSIG. If the system was new and it had a max design pressure of 450 PSIG, I would still pressure test it around 325, 350. You could pressure test it up to say 400, but you don't typically have to go that far if you are checking it with a digital manifold gauge set. You should still be able to find that leak. And the issue with a compound set is, say this one only goes up to 350 before it can't read it anymore. So on this one, you may only want to be pressure testing up to 325 unless you have a heat pump manifold gauge set. Tip number three is if you do end up having a leak and the leak is dramatic, you can just listen for that leak at the evaporator coil at the outdoor unit. But if it only goes down a little bit at a time, then you're likely going to go ahead and apply bubble leak detector onto your joints in obvious places first. This is non-corrosive bubble leak detector. You want to make sure that you're not using dish soap and water because that's pretty corrosive nowadays. So make sure that you're using a non-corrosive bubble leak detector. If the leak is not in an obvious location, then you may want to use a tool such as the ultrasonic leak detector and this one you can listen for the nitrogen escaping through the tubing it's just going to pick up the ultrasonic noise and you don't have to release the pressure and add in a small amount of refrigerant and then put nitrogen in for an electronic sniffing tool you can just stop right where you're at and then pull out the ultrasonic leak detector and listen for the leak the nice thing about this tool is it's picking up ultrasonic noise so it can be used even if it's windy outside I have some videos on searching for leaks with this tool down in the description section below. Tip number four is if you notice that the pressure is falling a little bit at the beginning right when you put the nitrogen into the system, be aware that if you take the nitrogen out of a hot truck and you put it into a cooler system, the pressure may fall a little bit, but it should level off after the nitrogen becomes the same temperature as the system is. So this kind of thing will occur even, even if you're working with a dry nitrogen. It's not going to occur as much as a refrigerant would with liquid and vapor in the tank, but it's going to occur a little bit. 
The other thing to be aware of is you may be leaking nitrogen out of your hoses and connection points. So if you have worn and torn grommets, you want to replace those and you may be leaking out of your gauge set itself. So those are some things to be aware of. You want to keep your hoses to a minimum, but you do want to pressure test on both sides of the system in order to make sure that you're not losing pressure. If you have a, a high pressure test, then it may not be equal on both sides. The, the TXV may only be allowing a certain amount of pressure across and it may be closing. That's a possibility, but for most systems, you can get both sides to match but I would add your nitrogen into the system into both sides at the same time and get your pressures to, to be the same thing. The only reason that I have both sets hooked together like this for this pressure test is just to compare these two manifold sets. To reduce the possibility of leaking through the hoses, you could use test probes for your pressure test and you would need a T in order to read your pressure while also adding your nitrogen into the system. So you're gonna need a T for both sides but that's something that you could do as well just to avoid the potential for leaks with your hoses and manifold gauge sets. Tip number five is you can use a quick connect test gauge with a T in order to pressure test the line set that's not connected to the indoor unit or the outdoor unit. So say even if you did connect this to the outdoor unit but you're, you're replacing the indoor unit, you want to make sure that the, the tubing is holding and there is no leaks, you could put a quick connect test gauge on there and you just need a T to add your pressure in and then you can leave this at the site for say 24 or 48 hours and just make sure to see if your pressure is going to fall or not. Now obviously on newer construction jobs you may not want to leave any tool like this on site uh, but in some instances you may just need to hook these up when you get to the site onto your, onto your port. So the only issue with that is is when you first connect this and disconnect it and then reconnect it again you may lose a little bit of nitrogen pressure when you are reconnecting your quick connect test gauge in order to check to see if you have any leaks. Tip number six is to release the nitrogen pressure from your pressure test out of one port only. So what we're going to do is I'm going to open up this vapor side and we're just going to allow the pressure from here to go through all of the tubing in the system and to escape out of this side. The reason for that is, is to blow any oil, any existing oil that's in this system onto the inner walls of the tubing so that when you pull a vacuum, you're able to pull the vacuum through it. So you can do the oil procedure after this, the oil blowout procedure. And what that is, is you're putting about 100 PSI, you're flowing it through from the liquid side to the vapor side, and you're just pushing the oil onto the inner walls of the tubing. You're not blowing oil out of the system, you're just pushing it to the inner walls of the tubing in order to get an accurate vacuum through all your tubes. So I'm going to shut this nitrogen tank, close this, disconnect. I'm going to back this out a little bit. And since I have this right here, what I'm going to do now is these two handles are shut. And I'm going to open this handle up, and I'm going to open this handle up. And that's going to allow me to release the nitrogen pressure out of the vapor side of the system. When you're releasing the nitrogen pressure test from a system from only one side, and say you have 350 PSI, and it's flowing from one side to the other, then you may not need the oil blowout procedure when you're trying to perform a successful vacuum on an existing system. But you can do an oil blowout procedure and what you do is you're just connecting your yellow service line to the nitrogen regulator and you're going to disconnect the blue hose down at the port. You're going to put a cup there just to make sure if there's any dro a droplet or two of oil that come out, they don't get, doesn't get pushed onto the ground. But basically what's happening is you're connecting your yellow service line to your red liquid line and you're pushing your nitrogen, you're flowing your nitrogen through for about 10 seconds. And that's not to blow oil out of the system, but just to the inner walls of the tubing to get ready for your vacuum procedure. Tip number seven is if you're not 100% sure that you don't have any small leaks in the system, the standing vacuum test is going to be a secondary confirmation that you have no leaks in the system. So after performing a vacuum, what's going to happen is your standing vacuum test is your micron gauge attached to the system ports, but your hoses that are connected to the vacuum are shut off. So when we perform a vacuum, our ports right here, are, we're gonna remove the valve cords out, we're gonna connect our hoses to the vacuum pump here, and then you're gonna have your micron gauge attached to the suction line. So 
when you get down to say 300 microns and you shut this valve and this valve off to isolate the system you're still going to be reading your vacuum level in the system so if it does not rise then you know that you have no leaks you also know that you have no water air or nitrogen in the system so it's a secondary confirmation that you have no leaks if this does rise and just continues to rise right out of the range then you know you have a leak but you should not be using this as your pressure test method because what's going to happen is if you do have a leak you're going to be sucking that hot humid air into your tubes if you're doing this in the middle of summer you're just going to be sucking the air right in through the leak into the tubes and you don't want to do that the object of a vacuum is to re remove the air and any moisture that's in the system you're removing that and you're holding a vacuum and you're going to break that vacuum with refrigerant from the bottle or from the system. If you want to learn more about the steps to prepare a system for refrigerant and also refrigerant charging and troubleshooting, check out our paperback and also our ebook over at acservicetech.com and we have a full outline and sample pages there for you to check out. And if you're looking for any of the tools used in this video, I have them linked in the description section below. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.